I've done stop motion for over 10 years and I'm in college now getting a degree in graphic design and somehow these stars aligned and my professor gave us a stop motion assignment and as you guys would assume, I already know how to do that. But this is a bit of a different video this time around. Since I'm dorming at my university, I had to make the stop motion over there rather than my usual setup here at home. And the requirements for this project made it feel like I'm learning a whole new skill. The requirements on this assignment we were given is as follows. It has to be at least 15 seconds, include basic text and text features using After Effects. We have to have proof of the individual images taken, and of course, to use After Effects for all the editing. Now, I didn't mention that this class is actually an After Effects beginner class, so a stop motion project is something I never would have considered to be first. And the point of this assignment is for us to learn how to import images into After Effects while also creating a stop motion within the program itself. Thing is, I've been using stop motion apps and editors on my iPad for years now, so I could just so cheat, but I'm not going to because I have integrity and we're paying a lot of money for university, so I'm not gonna do that. Looking at the stop motion setup in the dorm, I have this one lamp, cramped desk space, and this dorm chair. So seeing the setup I have over there, how does it compare to the setup I have over here? In my usual stop motion setup at home, I have two lamps, a wide empty desk space, lots of space for my tripod to go in, and this pretty average chair, but it's still really uncomfortable to sit in. But I can have an even better chair thanks to today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. They sent me over the C7 Max chair, and it is a way better experience for these long hours of animating and editing videos. My old chair is basically one solid piece with no comfort adjustment at all. But the C7 Max, it has 5D adjustable armrests that move up and down and articulate all around for maximum comfort as well as a 3D adjustable headrest that fits all the positions that you would want to relax your neck in. My old chair hurts my lower back after hours of sitting. I literally need to use an extra pillow to support my lower back. But the C7 Max, it has adjustable lumbar support to relieve that pain and making sitting way more enjoyable. Regular everyday chairs are made of normal foam that aren't the best when it comes to sitting for hours, but FlexiSpot's C7 Max is made of this latex seat cushion with memory foam for great resilience, and it feels amazing. FlexiSpot has a 30-day return policy for a risk-free trial if you're not sure on your purchase, a 10-year warranty with direct replacement for damaged parts, and that all comes included when you use my code C750 for a $50 discount at checkout or when you use the link in the description. If you have a limited budget, they have more chairs on their site such as the C5, which features many of the same comfort options, but be sure to check their site out to see what fits you best, and thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video and making my setup way more comfortable. So the university setup is fairly different from the one I have here, but nothing impossible to use. I brought this Miles Morales figure from home for a simple animation, and I am going to be using the Stop Motion Studio Pro app, but purely for the onion skin feature so it can help me with the animating process. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, and this is the footage I have so far. Only 37 frames, not too bad, not too bad movement from Miles either. I'm planning for the letters to go from the right side to the left for Miles to hit it back to the right. The reason I'm doing that is because this assignment entails that I use some type of text effect from After Effects, so we can kind of learn that. So I guess that's going to be my plan here. I'm going to do a bunch of keyframing for the letters and have them come together in the end. I wrapped up animating within an hour and got all the filming done <laughs> now it's time for the editing and bear with me here i'm here to learn after effects so i know i'm about to get clowned for not knowing the basic features but it did feel really different to be fair in fact everything was so different that even the beginning was foreign to me Instead of just exporting the app as a video, I had to export each individual frame and keep them in a folder together. Then the next step was to compile all the images into here and set them as a sequence instead of the app just doing it for me. And the most challenging part was honestly trying to adjust the frames per second. But it turns out I just had to right click and adjust it in the composition settings, which was weird to me. The overall workflow felt familiar, but it definitely wasn't the same. Keyframes were a few more clicks away than normal. The ability to freeze frames for longer shots had way more steps than the Studio Pro app. Just a lot of the same, but it felt like a lot more work to get to the same end. The whole point of this, like I showed earlier, will be to get the letters from the right to the left and back to the right with Miles Morales hitting it. There's gonna be a lot of keyframing because of this. What I did like though was the added history of keyframes. 
It gave a clear travel line for where your object was going and where it has been and how it's gonna look once it moves. So I thought that was really nice. The mobile apps I use don't have a keyframe history at all. So you really just need to understand where your object has been and where it's going yourself. So it's more or less the same. It's just that the added history is greatly appreciated. So it's not all negatively different on After Effects for me. I think because of the composition frame rate, it made the animation choppier than it really was. I'm not sure why it did that because when I exported directly from the app, it looked somewhat different but that's a whole other discussion once i got everything done i just needed to render it upload it to a burner youtube account and submit the project and here is the final product of my first after effects stop motion So yeah, nothing crazy. I hit most, if not all the requirements on the project. My professor seemed to like it, so that's a W in my mind. But yeah, I just wanted to share this in a video because I thought it was really cool that I get to do something for a college project that I've been doing on my own for years, but I got to put a new kind of fresh way into it with the editing. And I'm not gonna lie, even after learning After Effects, I might stick to my regular apps. But this was my first time using After Effects, so who knows, that might change. But if you guys have used After Effects before, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you like it. Either way, like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys in the next video.